and execute the calls necessary to come back in the game. The first time that they showed us that they had evolved and adapted beyond that was in part one when they played Team Devantic on Tomb of the Spider Queen. You are correct, actually. That's they were behind, and they could only take one fight. And it was at 13, and they did, and, and they, they won, it. and they won the game. Well, Superstars, you're going to need to take, you know, maybe a note out of your past series against Neventic. They're going to be taking us to Towers of Doom for game three. Definitely a Superstars map, way more than that of Neventic. So, I, I, you know, I, it's just that much more weight against Neventic here in this game. They do, are coming off of a win, which might be able to help them, may really show them to thrive. And Genji, this is going to be one of his better maps, probably if he has a map, I'd say it's this one, really. I love that Superstars chose Battleground pick being down. They know that Neventic wants map pick. They have chosen that every time they've lost a game in the past, I think, three series. So now to make that adjustment and say, you want the map pick, we're not going to let you have that unless you lose and you get the choice. So instead, taking them to Towers, a bigger Battleground, one where there is still team fighting around the altars, but where superstars can hope to out macro Neventic. Yeah, that is, it's a really awesome point because not only, as you said, it pulls away from what Neventic has shown to be desiring after a loss in the past, but it also takes them to a map where their play style doesn't add up that well. Towers of Doom, individual decision making, globals, macro play, not Neventic, you know, words we use around the word Neventic very often. Neventic has played some globals in the past, playing more of them, especially toward the end of part one and then the beginning of part two to ensure that they could keep up with macro. So we may still see them pick something like a Falstad. But really, everything we know about Neventic out the window because of this role swap. Yeah, they've got a new support player. They've got themselves a new backliner. Neventic <laughs> doesn't want to deal with Faye. I'm going to straight up ban the Vikings. Not dealing with that. Respect. Respect. Falstad ban from Superstars. That is... Genji first pick. There's no way, right? In I'm the last... so surprised to see a Falstad ban from Superstars. That's one of Hosty's favorites. Abathur macro play. Ooh. Well, you talked about Abathur Genji being a thing and being scary. I don't know. I don't know if it scares me that much. Honestly, it's like a it's like a worse than every other melee assassin, but still scary because Genji diving and then having a shield is a bit terrifying. Yeah, I think Abathur Greymane would still be yeah. a better combo, but I could be wrong. We may both be. We're going to find out here in this draft because Neventic has picked Genji at the top half of their rotations every game so far in this series. And then when it gets to the map where I expect Genji to show up, nothing so far. Superstars, I don't think there's any way Superstars doesn't either deny the Genji in this pick here, or Neventic pick it up in their next two. For Superstars, it has to be what's the scariest with Abathur, and they feel they need to take Greymane away from that possible combination. They also get to Haka, so they have some counter split pressure along with that. But yeah. making sure that there's no Abathur Greymane pairing. Yeah, Superstars had a proper response to what they had seen out of the Abathur pick, going with a Dahaka after the Falstead ban, getting a global to match a global. Heads up there, taking away the Greymane, objectively strong character, but then also a good Abathur hat. There comes out the Genji and the Muradin, though, for Neventic. That Abathur first pick's Pretty cool from Neventic. Yeah. If they feel like Genji Abathur and Greymane Abathur are both objectively strong pairings, and Superstars don't want to draft both of those things because they want to get a global to make sure they can keep up with that aspect too, they're forced to give Neventic one of those. Yeah, they very, they very much are. And Superstars with that Uther ban now crippling Genji to, again, thrive onto the back line. Neventic questioning if they want to ban the Medivh Last time they experienced that. Yes, because Hosties, Falstad's already gone, which lends to, he's going to play Medivh, Zarya, Falstad, maybe Zagara. Those are the primary things that he plays. Uh, he's played some Tychus too, but those are all the highest things up other than yeah. a rogue little panda they who's ready it, for adventure. 
they banned the in new barracks. So in fact, mm, okay. Medivh is still an option for Hosi. But I agree with you. That is something that for this draft specifically, with how many bans and picks have gone towards heroes that Hosi is more comfortable on or works in the composition of superstars, I would have very much liked to see that as well. Neventic may be pushing the envelope of the heroes. Especially if Genji wants resets and Medivh is the denier of said resets. I, you know, like I view, I view Genji as not a denier of resets, even though it seems like it, purely based off of, you have to consider the rate at which the damage is coming in and then how, how articulated that amount of damage is. So like a Divine Shield, for instance, is bad against any damage you can't see. Uh, just purely based on you can't predict the incoming damage, whereas Ancestral, maybe you could react to it. Like, you couldn't even react to it that. Either way, it's just using a immunity to a damage source, you have to predict the damage incoming. Genji's damage is, in general, so fast that you, the initial opener, you aren't going to be able to outshield unless you see him. And the well, distance he, is so far, right. he should be able to stay out of the fog, dash in, and you won't pre-shield onto a target and save him off the reset. You'll yeah. save after. It uh, mainly comes down to if he strikes in, yeah. but doesn't get the kill off of that strike because of a heal or misrepresenting or managing, if he actually gets the kill from that. And then that amount of time you drop the shield, then you can drop the taunt and just turn around and kill Genji. Yeah. Chromie is going to be the last pick here for Neventic. My guess is we're going to have Kenma there on that one. So what do we see out of Superstars? They have a Medivh option. Still up. What else do they want? It's Hosi's hero. Zarya's a thing. The False Dead banned out. I feel like... Man, I don't know. There's what Superstars drafts according to them? I don't know. If this wasn't Superstars, and again, Hosi's hero pull on Towers of Doom into the Chromie delay with the Avatar Genji. I think I Zeratul. I would put Goku on Zeratul in this game and put, they're gonna go with the, okay, so they go with the Zarya, stick into Hosi, onto his normal hero, but just into a Genji, Avatar, and Chromie are all three heroes that I think are vulnerable to a Zeratul. They high health pulls and mobility only hurt the Genji reset. They only hurt Chromie. But all three of those heroes are not affected. So it just pick it, blow up either Genji with Zeratul or Chromie with, Zer or with Zeratul. And then you have a lot of healthy heroes er elsewhere. Well, Zarya has a spell shield that she can get later on. She has shields that she offers to her teammates too, which will be key. We talked about Medivh trying to help make sure that uh, Zuna can't dash in and then get the kill and dash back out. But Taunt will be able to help with that as well. And then they have Root follow-up, Twilight Dream 2, Drag. So Zuna does need to watch how oh, and yeah. when he dashes into the team. It could be a double Genji being terrifying. I don't, I'm, I'm not, again, still not convinced with that one as well. But it is something we may see. What I do like out of this is to translate it before Genji for anybody who's struggling to try and understand what is Genji good at? What does he do? It's much like into a Zeratul. If that Genji was a Zeratul instead, what do you want to make happen? Make it unkillable. Make it hard for him to dive in, be effective, not get those resets. Three warriors, in fact, is a step in the right direction. And when your only vulnerable target's a Greymane who can trade into a Genji, you know you drafted right. Yeah, Varian's going to have protection for days. Dahaka may not even be there, but if he is, he's probably going to be hanging out with Chromie instead, trying to drag her or drag someone away. So your options are limited for Genji and who to kill. Here we go. We're tied 1-1 in the series so far. Let's see who takes game number three. We're heading into Towers of Doom. You know, it is 1-1. Something I don't know if I expected out of this series. And if I did, definitely not on Tomb of the Spider Queen. But here, Neventa continuing the roll swap with Kenma on the Chrome. Tomster playing Abathur. Superstar is going to kick in Norm. Everybody, nobody giving you old shake and bake the mix up here. Yeah, even their talents are standard from what we see thus far. Still waiting on Malfurion. Scouting drone versus Moonburn. Rip in pieces. 
We got ourselves a mini here. Zuna hitting the pause button. We'll be getting to that game as soon as we possibly can. Feels bad. Am I? Are you looking at Kenma's build? I'm, yeah. <laughs> I would. His Dragon's Breath build. So he is building up the damage of Dragon's Breath as he gets stacks hitting heroes with that. And then, okay, we're going back to the game and then we'll continue our Dragon's Breath build The chromy, chromy build conversation. Yes, in Enveloping Assault is the name of that talent. And what is it? Enveloping Assault, because once you get... I thought it oh, was no, it's Deep Breathing. Enveloping Assault is at four. Never mind. What's up? I thought it was Developing Salt. I was like, that's an interesting <laughs> name. I kind of like Maybe, it, though. Yeah. yeah, this is Deep Breathing. So it will increase the damage, and then increases damage more once you finish the stacks, hitting 25 heroes, and then also gives Chromie some increased vision. Enveloping Assault is what we'll probably see at four. Now, I don't, I don't know. I guess if you still maybe want Bronze Talons, but that is what increases the radius of it by 25%. This is... I've never seen this currently build. I'll be honest. Is there a different... Is this a... Oh, Saray getting caught out. No way he's going to make it out of this one. No shield left. That's the first kill. Cure with a beautiful Dwarf Toss body block. He's got a Storm Bolt in half a second. Throws it out. Gets the kill. That was pretty. It was. It was cure, you know, setting it up for a lot of those picks, too, all with that Dwarf Toss. All right, so what was your question? There's Enveloping Assault. Have you seen this build ran by any other region? Oh, I, gosh, I think oh, like Europe China. ran it one time. I think it was ran in Europe once. I've just never seen it. Do you have any insight into it? Like, I legitimately, this isn't even one I've, like, fake theory crafted on my own. This is just flat out. What is it? What it? What? effect is it going to have? Obviously a bit more damage on W's, more frequently seeing W's thrown out from the Chromie. At seven, what do you take? You go for Mobius Loop? I don't know, because you could get Mobius Loop and the damage that you get, because it's going to reduce damage. You're kind of evening out, and that way you have Dragon's Breath up more often. Uh, they have just a lot of area, so if there's grouping up for superstars, maybe it's something versus the big melee composition that they can hit a whole bunch of them at once, then Genji can try to get resets. I am not too sure. You know who would know? Trickster. Trick, I know. This is, the, this is the moment we needed him. He was the hero we needed. Shots channeled, traded up on top. Genji and Dahaka questioning where they want to go. Abathur's out a bit, but Dahaka doesn't want anything to do with that face. Starting the channel, Cure with the first in a row. Cure. Dwarf tosses out already and has been dragged oh. back in. Goku body block. Burrows down to avoid damage. One kill so far for Superstars as Iacona starts to channel. Beautiful body blocking there from Superstars, and it's going to net them four extra shots. What is it, Ken? All right. Yes, Mobius loop. So it does reduce the damage by 25%, but also the cooldown by 50% and mana cost. Cooldown's the main thing. Is it to make sure that he can be more of a wave clearer? That seems not it. Then you would still go Compounding Aether. Yeah. If you did it for Vision, you'd still go Compounding Aether. That's the one thing that I, that's what I'm a little bit torn on. So I'll, I'll keep I'll keep thinking, you know, keep the paddles of paddling away up top. You think of your mind as a rowboat? <laughs> I, it, it's definitely something try to stay afloat. <laughs> that's about all I got on that one. Wouldn't it be more like a bucket bailing? I mean, maybe. keep the buckets bailing. Yeah. Either way, <laughs> all I know is that there's a lot of treading, and I often feel like I'm I'm kind of just sinking into the abyss. And so, yeah, a paddle boat or something of the like was the first thing that came to mind. <laughs> just most people talk about it like gears turning. Anyway. Here, hanging out with an Abath or Symbio in mid, trying to keep the waves as clear as they can. They are somewhat lacking that. There you can see the Dragon's Breath continuing to build up stacks. It's about halfway done. Invade here. Invade takes a little damage, getting body blocked by Zuna. That is not a good spot. So there goes the shield onto him. Flank onto Kenma, though. He ends up going down. Saray popping the third shield. Iacona getting 1v1 by Zuna on the other side. Big impact squirreling his way out. The Sapper Camp, Goku cannot deny, and Zuna dashes right on out there. Steal and a winning trade for Neventic. And Abathur side soaking. Things are working. 
I love the spinning around on the point. I've got it, and boom, I'm out of here. Two more altars activating in a few seconds. Team Deventic has a full level lead again, thanks to their early game. There's a lot of things we're saying today about Neventic that, again, just don't sound like things we normally say about them, that being one. Good early game, Neventic. Second game in a row. They were kind of B-step-esque for a while, you know? Maybe not as iconic or as reliable as a B-step, but they very much were the, we will lose the early game, maybe. Well, in fact, win the late game. But a lot of control shown from them, and in all the weird ways, through macro, through an avatar, it's just the one the one thing about Neventic's play here today that is does feel like it's a step back. And what I mean by that is more revisiting history, maybe a former time. Good dwarf toss, storm bolt, body blocks onto Faye. She's got nowhere to run. Disengage up in one. Doesn't matter, bite but for the win. Superstars are taking so much damage from Neventic. Their Abathur, Chromie wasn't even there. Abathur has taken Mule too, so they're making sure that they're winning on all fronts. They control the structures. They're getting sappers. They're getting picks. And they're getting altars. They are behind in the core. But with their big experience advantage right now, they should be able to catch up with that in no time. I want to know who's getting cloned. I think it's Genji. I'm going to be honest. I, I really do. It's either that or it's Murden. Murden clone is still a really good one, but I don't see Chromia or Rhaegar ever uh, holding the torch there. <laughs> this has been the mid-game, still controlled here by Neventic with their 10s. We have the Chromie going. It's still full W and the slowing sands. 13 still going for range. Yeah, reaching through time. So there's even more range with that, as you can see. Deep breathing is not done yet. And it is a big damage boost once that is done. So as long as they can do this, Greymane down just as heroics available for superstars. Iacona chased down by a Genji clone. Yeah, the double dash in there with the clone over the wall. Twilight Dream is going to land. No kills to be gained. Oh, if I could just get the kill. They're so weak. Sray comes in. Zuna is going to get the Ancestral. Goku ends up picking up one. Kenma just scampering away with those tiny, tiny legs, Dread. but the dinosaur is too fast. Not even needed. Now Zuna's in trouble, but has Abathur hat, Carapace from that to help give him a little bit of healing. Goku is angry. It's just like, who, is, who can I drag? Who can I pull in? I mean, Kira's got a hat, though, so he's not, nothing to laugh at here for him. The biggest problem is his mana pool and the fact that he hasn't hit 13, but once that happens, Abathur's one terrifying hero. Sun's coming out here. Zuna, there's no way, right? That's the last one. Barely survived there. The flash didn't connect over the wall. Goku and Superstars get four more shots after what was maybe the longest fight we've... Oh, my gosh. It's not done. What was maybe the longest fight <laughs> we've experienced. Now it's done. And Oops. scene. <laughs> and scene. <laughs> Oh. What a crazy Towers game. Just it's long back and forth fighting. Neventic getting picks, getting ahead in the early game, playing Abathur, double Genji, Dragon's Breath build. This does feel a bit like Superstars struggling to deal with I mean, obviously, it's just Zuna's Genji here in this game. A lot of it is not even that Zuno's maybe doing the damage necessary, but he is creating the chaos and the havoc in these fights, the split decision-making. We'll find out. We're yet to experience a full perfect, okay, you stay on your side, we stay on our side, five versus five, go. Uh, but the early games has just been watch Zuna just kite around the map, steal camps, and get kills. Well, now we have heroics for superstars. They have taunt to try to deal with that. Twilight Dream 2 in the last fight. Pivotal to try to turn that around for superstars. And a cursed bullet. So if they want to make Murden the primary target, you know, they have the taunt, drag too, so they have him 
locked down for a long time. Expulsion Zone will not save your life this time, Hosty. Cure has Avatar Twilight Dream used. Genji goes down a one for one in trades between the teams. Goku comes in. He drags on to the backliner there. Kenma uh, trying to retreat. As Cure ends up getting hit by the root. Nuz combo coming out from Kenma once more, dishing out the damage, forcing Goku to pop his passive. We've got 20 seconds before two ultras. Oh my gosh, they got the CC chain and the burst. And look at this, Ray is now in a terrible spot. How? I, all when, when you think things are good and Eventic just turns a fight. Superstar is getting rather desperate in this game and just Neventic perfectly turning around with their resources and getting a lot of big fights. Kenma got rooted, but not gonna matter. Cure has the delay. Here we go again. Goku tries to drag Cure in. As I was saying, they do have Cursed Bullet, so if they can keep him locked down and he doesn't have Avatar or can't use it, then that's a possible kill for them. Zuno also used his ult, so he's not as effective to get a there double reset. There they go in the initiation. Ancestral ends up landing. Chromie dishing out the damage from the back. No channel yet to be started, but Cure near Oom. He'll have Avatar in 10 seconds for a possible re-engage, but with Ancestral healing down. Not as certain if they'll be able to continue this fight, though Tomster tried to delay with his clone. Now Goku's in trouble. He has shielding, but with the body blocks from Tomster, Adaptation just now available. He's not going to use it. Smart plays. Tomster, the clone there. The one thing for Neventic, the fact that they popped the clone and didn't get the delay, not maybe the best communication, or at least the communication that they would want is a group there. Anytime you drop that heroic, you want that fight. You want the picks, and it all starts with the delay. Either way, though, Neventic is fine. They're down eight shots when it comes to the core, but they are so far ahead in experience, they should be able to come back probably on the next altar phase. Yeah, they've been doing a good job of steadily sieging throughout this game. And you could see it in the top lane. It hasn't done too much, but this bottom lane is ripe for the picking with the Dragon's Breath, Zuna's Shuriken, so those have been taken. That forces uh, superstars to make sure they defend versus these sappers. So Neventic can either try to escort these in and scare away all of superstars, especially because Neventic have 16, so superstars would not like to team fight, or they can try to push in another lane. Taunt right there goes the Twilight Dream. Zuna is killed. The sappers have been saved as well. Do they get anything else? Superstars, Stray takes the poke. Posty's now here. It looks like all they wanted was Zuna. The altars are up. 25 seconds in the bell tower here on bottom in Neventic's name. Superstars wants it. Will they get it? There's no Genji for 20 seconds. Altars activating before then. Slowing sand, slowing down Kira there. Damage out from Chromie. Dropping bombs left and right. Stray trying to avoid. Also has protection. Kira body blocking. Stormbolt. Damage from Chromie again. But Stray stays protected. Taunting Muradin to save his life. Now. Superstars have kept Neventic here while Dahaka's stealing away their altar. And the Sappers, not a single one, made it into the core of Superstars. So not only do they get the shots and deny them, but they actually stop every Sapper. That legitimately could not have gotten better. Well, you know it could have. You could have finished that channel. But Cure with the delay, it's still just... It's ridiculous, the fact that they were able to get that much done. And now they have the 16 talent here. They could fight Superstars here. It's going to be matching the Ventic on this top right altar. Gain Train now making a lot more shielding possible for Hosty to try to help keep alive the team through this damage. Stormbolt used. Banner down. Drag here. They're trying to go after Murden. Ancestral healing this time. Not enough to keep him alive. Not enough. And that is going to be the kill. What else can they make happen here? Will Zuna look for a delay? No. Abathur pressuring out up on bottom, though. Something that has got to be stressing superstars out. They get three more shots as they sit nine ahead of Neventic. 14 to 23. Cheeky mule to make sure this bell tower is as healthy as it can be before superstars try to take it back giving Neventic possibly time to siege elsewhere. But no, nope, they are continuing to put focus in this bottom lane with the Sappers, with their damage. That bell tower, Twilight Dream, been used. Once again, Superstar's trying to get a kill. Ooh. Oh, baited face, Lowing Sands, the combo lands. 
Expulsion Zone baited and a Dahaka Burrow. Man, one dash coming out from Genji, and that was it. Such good bait. That was the first time we've seen that. I'm honestly a bit surprised. Taunt goes on to Genji, root there. Ancestral not going to connect. Big impact, not having the timing needed. And you got to give him credit for he's on a different role. So really intricate timings like that is something he doesn't have. And maybe predicting right. how much burst a actual, what comps can do what burst and when. Yeah, that's a great point. Even this same comp, as we have gone through this game even further, because now that there are more things like taunt, more damage with Executioner too. But that was an important pick. Team Nevintic take out the support from Superstar, so no uh, Malfurion for 45 seconds. Yeah, it's just that whenever you get high burst compositions like this of Superstars, it puts it to where Ancestral has to be decided almost within half a second of time. And you either commit or you don't, depending on what you see in that small fraction of time. Yeah, and the hope is if it's Genji or Muradin, they have some self-sustaining tools, right? They've even got perfect defense now so that Genji has deflect up more often. And Muradin has Avatar. He's taken stone form, so they're doing all, their can, all they can. The problem is with Cursed Bullet and the lockdown available, especially if Twilight Dream is used to execute a target, those have to be in an instant, like you said. We'll see if... Biggie can make the necessary adjustments now that Superstars has gotten to that late game. Oh, Goku got the burrow interrupted. Zuna gets another reset, and it looks like a boss is soon to follow for Neventic, as they are now going to be able to restore the HP to even after this boss. 14 to 14, and 20 will be closed in after the top bell tower falls. Neventic has found themselves in a game to lose situation now. They have a long while to play around with getting picks on superstars and can dictate a lot of their rotations. And their dedication to the macro game is paying off again. They rotate after the boss to get the top bell tower, knowing that superstars were in the bottom. Finally getting that bottom bell tower back after what must have felt like an eternity for superstars to have to give that to Team Neventic. So now Neventic can set their sights elsewhere. They're moving in toward mid, trying to use that 20 talent tier to their advantage with it out of ammo, unless they can get a kill from this. Conveniently not available, thanks to Zuna. So we see the bell tower dance experience here for superstars as they're trying to just balance out the map, set everything to 4-4. Four, four. It's where you feel good, it's where you feel at home. The sapper camps down on bottom are going to be cleared out by big impact, and the rest of Neventic are going to clear and escort their own. The positive zone, superstars, they've got their 20 now. They can actually take an even team fight. The shots are still the same. This is the worst case scenario that you normally expect when you are on this map. Oh, man. That town poor I didn't actually see that until he was already dead I'm gonna be honest yeah same and that was 55 seconds of no Kenma the primary poke hero for this too to be able to stay alive they're not even going to try to contest this now they know that it's a lesser amount of shots uh, Dahaka's trying to take back mid, and Zuna wants to stop this. He wants to force Superstars maybe to have to take the altar before the Bell Towers have been achieved, but Superstars aren't buying it. They're playing patiently. They want to take this back and get the extra shot. Oh, do they? They're not going to. They're actually going to channel. Yeah, I guess maybe they knew that Team Neventic, it would give them time to start pushing up in top, yeah. so it wouldn't have made any difference. It's better to just get this, and then they can try to get back up and maybe even get kills before Chromie's back. Well, not only that, but what it does is it loses all window for a kill right now. Twilight Dream comes out, and that is going to be big impact. I wish you could ancestral yourself right then. That is going to be big end back falling. This is what they needed. And exactly what I was trying to talk to you before is that not only does it make the shots even, so why risk it in the first place, but then you're wasting all your kill time in the world. Even if that didn't go even, I would have rather see superstars rotate out. Right, especially because Chromie was down. So it was the best time to try to get a team Just fight. Neventic was greedy. They were trying to get top away from superstars to control what has been controlled by Neventic for this whole game. They didn't want to let Superstars tie those up, and they paid for it. They lost Murden, they lost Rhaegar as Chromie came back. So now Neventic did lose three more shots onto the core thanks to that scenario. Goku has spent 
longer part of his life than he probably would like restoring these forts back and he's still it's still yet to be achieved zuna is casually waiting over the wall for a gank but i don't even think even was demon blade or dragon blade you have any chance he gets dragged he's dead oh my that was so close he did take Zanshin, and it was immediately done. Already he blocked the necessary damage to get that. So Deflect will hit all nearby heroes. So adding more damage, a different level 20 talent than Zuna picked with his last Genji game. But pocket of time, you saw, that slow becomes a lot harder to deal with now at 80%. And it doesn't cost mana. Yeah, it's actually insane. Okay, so four to four on the altars for now, but they're not necessarily the way you would want. Dahaka is worried about top as Greymane's finishing that bottom channel. He's gonna stock though. He's already stocking in. Yep. Here's the triple warrior. The They're going after Zuna. They go in with the Twilight Dream. A little bit of damage. Good drag onto Zuna. Nobody down yet. Malfurion taking a lot of damage. Iacona has nothing left as he has no bolt. The shielding from Hosi is not enough. He is the first to fall. Look at this Dragon Blade go through the health bars. Already two taken out. Zuna dives in for a third. Dahaka is out of here. Using Deflect, Genji will die. But it'll be worth it. Stormbolt hits finally. Oh, straight dodging all of the poke from Kenma. All right, so this is where Superstars has lost. The only game they've lost in Eventic so far is this exact situation. They staggered their deaths. So it, my biggest focus here for Superstars is going to be how controlled do they play? It looks like they're backing out to, you know, swap and go mirror on the bell towers, which is a little unfair for my argument because they will play as passive as possible. And in the end, all the members will be up. So no staggered deaths this time. But if we do see any more staggered deaths out of Superstars, that, you know, after the last game, we gotta, gotta be harping on that because it is just, it was all of Tomb of the Spider Queen for both teams. That was a problem for Superstars in another match, too. Either Freedom or No Tomorrow, I think, was another issue for them. They got hit with staggered timers in the late game. Man, Superstars is constantly playing cleanup crew. They're like a janitor in an elementary school. Just, kindergarten classroom. Yeah. Just finger paints everywhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Half eaten Crayola Crayons. Everywhere. Uh, we had a glue incident on I don't think. <laughs> I guess that's the worst part because there's always that kid <laughs> yeah. with the glue. And it becomes an ordeal. You're not, you, that was a really good point. The boss started for Neventic. Hosey finds it. Keep in mind that's our expulsion zone available. Tom goes down in a big impact. That is not where you want your support. He is dragged and he is dead. These four shots are game. Neventic has to stop it. Zuna goes in along with Tomster Twilight Dream. Cure on point. Cure and Zuna remain. Taunt once again spells the end of Genji. Only Murden and Chromie trying to do their best. And Chromie is doing a lot. Sray only finally pushing her away. But that does it. Superstars being able to keep up in the altars. If nothing else, take the game away from Neventic. And well deserved here for superstars. You know, they were always down in experience, struggling in fights. I don't know if I give anybody the win there, but down in experience, down in the bell towers, matching it up, but the, using the global to be able to convert the bell towers, to bring them back and restore them to their own. It, and eventually got down to the one fight scenario and they win. It just wasn't a pretty game for superstars, one that I don't think they'll be overly proud of. More Still, relieved. Yeah. Definitely relieved. Yeah, especially considering we talked about it already, but, you know, for anybody at home that's wondering, why does Superstars versus Neventic matter? It's because this is one of the only two teams out of all of our standings, not Neventic, Superstars, that actually can change, and they have to win the series if it's going to. They can overtake B-Step there in the fourth spot, not be fifth any longer, finally overtake them. So it's important for them to, you know, Make sure they get that one step up. Yeah, Superstars has been working this entire time to get to this point where they can overtake B-Step and take fourth. And when I talked to Goku, he said that it was so, so important that they were able to do that because for Superstars, a team that relies on their strategy play, they don't want to show too much. And it means if they're in fourth, that they avoid the first round of playoffs. They get to watch and see who their 